Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Android News Byte. Today, I wanted to highlight a trio of articles detailing the upcoming Exynos 2500 chipset from Samsung. The company has announced its specs. We know what type of scores it's getting in Geekbench and Ntutu, and we know the first phone that will feature this new SoC. First up, we have the actual launch post of the Exynos 2500 chipset from Samsung. The company has detailed its specifications, so we're looking at an SoC with 10 CPU cores, with one of them being a Cortex-X5 CPU core clocked at 3.3 gigahertz. Two of them are Cortex-A725 cores clocked at 2.74 gigahertz. Five of them are gonna be Cortex-A725 cores clocked at 2.36 gigahertz. And then we're gonna have two Cortex-A520 efficiency cores that are clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. Samsung is saying that it will deliver 15% more performance for multi-core workloads compared to its predecessor. As far as the GPU is concerned, Samsung has been working with AMD to get this fourth generation graphics chip based on the company's rDNA3 architecture, but sadly we are not getting any other details here. However, we are told that not only does this GPU support hardware accelerated ray tracing, but it also offers up to 28% faster ray tracing performance for gaming workloads. Naturally, the Exynos 2500 is built to support LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage. It's ISP supports up to 320 megapixel camera sensors. You'll be able to record videos up to 8K at 30 frames per second and up to 4K at 120 frames per second with 10-bit HDR. And for 108 megapixel single or 64 plus 32 megapixel dual camera setups, you're gonna be getting zero shutter lag here, which is something that Samsung has needed to work on for years now. It also has support for Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, USB 3.2 Type-C, and both sub six gigahertz and millimeter wave 5G technologies. The NPU of this new chip is also getting some love this year with it being able to handle 59 trillion operations per second aka 59 tops for ai workloads the exynos 2500 is now samsung's latest and greatest flagship chipset and it stands out as their first soc built on the advanced three nanometer gate all around process AKA the GAA process. So while this chip is not breaking any records right now, or really getting even close to matching the performance of the Snapdragon 8 Elite, it is a big step forward for Samsung in general, especially when we consider they, they had a flop last year with the yield of their in-house Exynos SoC. This week, we are also seeing some Geekbench 6 benchmark scores for a new device with the model number SM-F766B, which is currently believed to be the upcoming Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 7. For months, we had been hearing that Samsung would be opting for using its Exynos chipset in its next flip phone. But many people had suspected that this would not be the case, 
mainly due to how low Samsung's yields were for its Exynos chipset last year, but also due to what people are speculating Samsung will charge for the phone, since these flip and foldable phones have been priced at a premium many people feel that, that Samsung should be using the Snapdragon 8 Elite instead of their in-house chip since it does provide more performance. But you can see, these three benchmark scores so far are giving the Exynos 2500 a single core score of around 2300 and a multi-core score of around 8000. For comparison, the Snapdragon 8 Elite in a normal phone like the OnePlus 13 is getting a single core score of around 3000 and a multi-core score of around 9200. And that same chip inside of a phone with a built-in cooler like the Red Magic 10 Pro, it's been getting a single core score of around 3200 and a multi-core score of around 9800. And two benchmarks for the Exynos 2500 seem to be putting the chip at around 2.2 million points, but we'll need to wait and see how this evolves as more people are able to get the phone in their own hands. That is, if the chip even makes it into the Galaxy Z Flip 7 to begin with. Current reports say Samsung has been able to achieve an average yield between 20 to 40%. And the company's goal is to get this up to 60% before the first product is launched. However, it looks as if the company may not be so strict this year when it comes to determining its yield. With speculation currently pointing to the price of the Snapdragon 8 Elite, and the reported price increase of its successor, which is probably why the brand Nothing has opted for the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3. It's going to be about performance per dollar over the next few years as inflation continues to settle throughout the world. I know there are going to be some folks out there who are not happy with the Exynos 2500 being used in the upcoming Galaxy Z Flip 7. Leaks have suggested this was going to be Samsung's plan all along, but as with most plans these days, it only takes a single piece of bad news for you to switch to an alternative which is why Samsung didn't use the Exynos chip inside the Galaxy S25 series earlier this year. But price is almost always the final piece of data that's needed. So I do suspect that Samsung will be taking the chip to the very last second before making that final decision. The company is unlikely to sell a ton of these devices, so I don't think that they're going to be needing to stock up on a bunch of chips in preparation for the launch, like we saw them need to do with the Galaxy S25 series. So, if you would, go ahead and share your thoughts down in the comments section below. I want to hear if you are happy to see Samsung making progress here, as I know I've been itching to get my hands on that AMD GPU to test out some emulation performance even though that raw CPU performance won't be able to compete against Qualcomm's best. Now, I want to appreciate each and every one of you who has stuck with me to the end of this video. And please, do not forget to give this video a like while also subscribing to the channel for more Android news content like this.